The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Previously on Element 14 Presents. As I... Oh no! I just got here! Now that is one heck of a multimeter. Hello, my name is James and welcome to Workbench Wednesday, where we talk about the tools on your electronics workbench. In this video, we will talk about the most common electronics tool, the digital multimeter or DMM. Specifically, we are focusing on this pocket size pen style from Tenma. Now, when I got this meter, I had two questions. How practical is it and how accurate is it? So, let's compare some measurements to its larger and more familiar looking cousin. First, let's review a couple of DMM basics. A multimeter measures multiple things. It's in the name. Typical meters will at least measure AC and DC voltage, resistance, continuity, diode junctions, and current. More advanced meters will add things like capacitance, temperature, frequency, or even an AC field presence detector. Now right away, let me just say, this pen style does not measure current. However, it does cover basic voltage, resistance, continuity, diodes, and capacitance. So it covers most measurement needs. Throughout this video, I will cover what I like about this meter, but first I wanted to mention its probe tip. You see, the positive probe tip is protected by this plastic. You can either engage it by moving it towards your target or just twist locking it out of the way. Now, there was a negative that turned out to be a positive, which is the screen can sometimes be hard to read. So I turned on the backlight, which I started to worry that it's going to drain the coin cell battery. But I immediately stopped caring because on the probe tip is an LED. Now I want all of my DMMs to have a light. To compare voltage, we will measure this AAA battery. Now remember, measuring a battery's open circuit voltage is not a good way to figure out how much energy it has left, but it'll work fine to compare two DMMs. Starting with the pin DMM, and it measures 1.768 volts. Now we'll use the big DMM, and it also measures 1.768 volts. That's pretty impressive. By the way, this cell is a lithium iron cell, so its open circuit voltage is a little bit higher than a traditional alkaline. That turned out pretty well. Now let's go do something a little more illuminating. Here's a pop quiz. Which lead on this LED is the cathode or negative side? If you said the short one, you're wrong. I cut the leads before the video. Why? Well, because this is a video about using a multimeter to measure things. And the DMM can tell us two things about an LED or diode, its forward voltage and the polarity. Let's start with the pin style multimeter. While measuring the LED, it is awkward to read the screen because it is upside down. To make reading the display easier, I'm turning on the DMM's hold feature. Now the maximum value is sticking, giving me a chance to see it right side up. 1.6 volts is what I would expect for a red LED. Oh, did you notice that the LED turned on when the leads were in the correct orientation? This is a quick trick you can use to figure out the polarity or the anode and cathode or the positive and negative sides of an LED. Let's see what the big DMM says now. Okay, so it got about 1.6 volts as well. By the way, you could use this voltage measurement to calculate the current limiting resistor for the LED. That's something that Karen talked about in the Learning Circuits Ohm's Law episode. 
Now I want to show you something cool with a blue LED. Watch what happens when I try to measure it. The small DMM cannot read the forward voltage. However, the LED still lights up. This behavior is common with DMMs. Usually they can only measure forward voltages up to about two volts. Even though this DMM cannot measure the junction's forward voltage, it can bias the LED enough to turn it on. So you can at least find the polarity. So far, I'm pretty happy with the capability of this little meter. Let's see what it does with something more reactive. Let's try a capacitor. This electrolytic capacitor's label says it has 10 microfarads. Let's see what the pin style says first. Okay, it's measuring 11.45. Now we can compare it to the big multimeter. It says 11.48. Both of these numbers are close enough for me to call it the same. Measuring capacitance is tricky, so I only use a DMM to get the capacitor's rough value. Both of these numbers tell me that the capacitor is around 10 microfarads. Okay, now let's go try something a little more linear, like a resistor. The color code for this resistor says it should be 3.82 kilo ohms. The mini meter measures 3.81. Wow, that is a lot closer than I expected. Um, okay, let's see how the big multimeter compares. 3.815. Holy cow, this is a really good resistor. I need to save it. Like I said earlier, resistors are a simpler passive device, so I expected the measurements to agree. I mean, these are really good, and they track what we saw with the voltage measurement, another one where I expected them to agree. Now that we've gone through some measurements, let me wrap up with my final thoughts. Overall, the Tenma pin style multimeter exceeded my expectations. Given its size, it is relatively accurate and it's really easy to use. The built-in tip light is fantastic. Occasionally dealing with an upside down screen is frustrating, but mitigate it by using the easy to access min and max hold functions. Being able to protect the tips and put this in my pocket is nice too. For its price range, this would make a decent first DMM. The only trade-off is that it cannot measure current. And so for that reason, I'm thinking it makes an excellent second DMM. I do like the idea of having a small meter to leave laying around on my workbench or throw it in a toolbox or even throw it in my computer bag. For more information on these meters or to ask questions about DMMs, head over to element14.com slash workbench Wednesday. While you're there, you could also let us know your favorite DMM tips. And what other tools would you like to see us feature on Workbench Wednesday? Speaking of fitting in my pocket, I think this one is going to come home with me. Okay, Max, I'm ready to go. 